Today, I'm creating the toughest Mario Wonder Challenge ever. Mario dies in one hit, can't use power-ups, and he can't touch checkpoints. We must complete the hardest level in the game, but each room has a new challenge. We start with the Parachute Cap Badge Challenge. Usually, Mario can open and close his floppy cap to avoid getting chomped, but not this time. Once Mario opens the cap in our challenge, it must stay open until he touches the ground or he dies. Mario picks the perfect moment to start his fall because even half a second late can prove deadly. Some parts are quick and simple, but other sections take a lot of dodging to survive. Luckily, Mario is a master weaver and makes it to the ground to start on the next zone. Room 2 gives us floating high jumps paired beautifully with spicy geysers. For a little extra flavor, Mario ground pounds after every single jump or he loses. Ground pounding makes the platform move much faster and further along the track. It takes a second to recover, forcing Mario to have a quick reaction time. The hip drop can freeze him in the air and drop him right into the pain juice. To stay alive, Mario runs on the front half of the platform and jumps ahead. Starting his ground pound far forward, make sure the platform will be underneath him when he lands. With a bruised tailbone, Mario finally makes it to the next room. I will forever be afraid of dolphins after this third zone. Mario uses the Dolphin Kick badge to outswim electrical shocks. Because Mario's true weakness is eating sweet, sweet gold, the challenge in this room is to not touch a single coin. Yes, that means both banana-flavored and grape-flavored coins. Mario swims and easily avoids the first sets of coins by taking his time. Usually the coins are in the middle, so if he hugs one of the walls, he can make it through with his diet intact. The alternating lightning trap is brutal. For more control, it's easier to just swim in this section, but every time I tried, Mario ate a poisonous coin. It is excruciating to learn a new method, but I got Mario to dolphin kick around the coins while keeping an empty stomach. Room 4 contains the crouching high jump challenge, so what better way to complete it than by having to crouch the entire time? If Mario forgets to crouch, the run gets reset. Mario and I got to work. At first, I wasn't sure this was even possible. If Mario always crouches, then he can get the mega jump every time. I got the idea to try spin jumps instead of small regular jumps, but I still died. Even though I almost get it to work, I need enough crouch time to charge up the badge. I figure out that as long as I stay crouched but jump before the badge is charged, Mario can duck and jump normally. Now I just need to conquer the final boss in this room, remembering to stay crouched while getting to the pipe. Time for the Wall Climb Jump Challenge. Mario must use the badge to jump up a wall before hopping away from it. These watermelon piranha plants sure are making Mario's belly grumble, so he has to devour every single coin and turnip in this zone to win. Mario leaps forward, but must be thorough. If he's even a little bit slow, he could miss a coin and ruin the entire run. Sometimes going back to grab a missed snack is possible, but adds stress. Mario's panic rises as fast as the poison trying to burn him. Mario makes it to the top and gorges himself before the evil challenge next. The most annoying badge is about to get worse. In the spring jump challenge, Mario's feet turn into trampolines and he can't stop jumping. The easiest way to jump over fire bars and pits is to use air twirls after each jump. So, because this challenge is insane, Mario can no longer twirl. I didn't realize how much I rely on those twirls to stay alive. Mario dies here a lot, especially in the section that has four fire bars in a row. I experiment with small jumps and big jumps to match the fire bar timing, but I'm pretty convinced this is impossible. Maybe my challenge just wasn't meant to be beaten. I almost give up, but I finally get the perfect timing without the air spin to make it through. Mario has a need for speed. The jet run challenge causes Mario to run at all times. He hovers off the edge and jumps to make progress. Because I hate myself, I'm banning jumps from this challenge. I'm not sure if Mario can get far enough without jumping, so this should get interesting. I thought of trying spin jumps, but they get way less distance than regular jumps. Mario must wait until the absolute last second before jumping. Waiting too long lets Mario run into sweet, sweet death. The red platform is the toughest part. I die here so many times. Maybe it doesn't work and I'll have to forfeit this challenge. I realized I hadn't been twirling after my spins, making it way harder than it needed to be. I'm not ready to admit defeat, so I keep pushing and I finally get it. Mario advances through the room, ready for the next trial. The best badge in the game comes next. Mid-air spin gives Mario extra height even after jumping. In this room though, Mario can't look or move to the left. Getting into the right position feels weird, and I keep forgetting to not look left. 
Mario learns to slowly approach each upcoming obstacle so he can be ready without having to backtrack. I power through the zone and get to the last area when, like an idiot, I look left. I rush through the run and get to the room again, and this time we successfully make it through. Only two rooms left. Mario faces the grappling vine challenge where he Spider-Mans to grab onto walls and climb upward. In this Spider-Verse, Mario isn't allowed to run and can only walk. This challenge seems easy, but becomes way harder than I expected. The vines only travel a certain distance, so running to get closer to the target makes a huge difference. Sometimes the vines can't reach far enough to latch onto the wall, and Mario falls into the abyss below. Mario learns to jump longer before throwing out the vine. Everything feels slower, so Mario adapts his jump timing to the burning box. Mario flings his way up the rest of the room and onto the final test. Oh man, the final test of the final, final, final stage. Mario wears the invisibility badge and navigates through an area while not being able to see himself. Because this is the ultimate test, we have not one, but three extra challenges for this room. Mario can't emote to see where he is, he can't play standees to see where he is, and he can't stop moving. After all the hard work to get to this point, I get no rest to calm down and think. If Mario stops jumping or moving for even a millisecond, I have to reset back to room one. I spam jump and twirl to see where I am and force Mario to keep moving. I make it to the dreaded balloon section. My eyes glue to the center of the screen and do everything in my power to get Invisa Mario to line up with the blobs. Mario lands on solid ground and keeps moving and jumping. I climb up the stairs and get ready for the final jump. Mario leaps and grabs the flagpole. If you think you can handle this brutal run, comment I accept the Aristotle challenge and report back when you complete it. Click on this video to see the 13 hardest levels ranked in Mario Wonder. I'm Aristotle and thanks for watching.